Wanted to do a uh, benchtop video today talking about my Israeli weapon industries, Tavor SAR, which stands for semi-automatic rifle. When I moved to Texas, these had just come out. Uh, they weren't available where I was living in previously because of infringing laws. So ordered one when I got down here and originally intended this to be for my wife, but was heavier than it realized, especially once you put all this stuff on it. I ended up sort of taking it and starting to use it. And the more and more I used it, the more and more I liked it. Probably about five years ago is when I decided this was gonna be kind of my all around go-to rifle for most of what I'm doing. And I've used it since then. If I was to guess, I mean, I don't keep track. I shoot this rifle a lot, both suppressed and unsuppressed. I'm gonna guess that I have somewhere between 8,000 and 10,000 rounds through it. Just this past weekend, I finally had my first like really bad failure from it. And what it was, is I had actually never broken down the bolt carrier group completely. And from fire and suppress so much, there was enough carbon in there that it was kind of bogging up the extractor and ejector and all that stuff. And I got sort of a stove pipe and a double feed while I was shooting with night vision. Besides that, virtually no problems. The only problem that I had besides that is if I was to switch, I'm a right-handed shooter and I switched to left hand, kind of push my head forward a little bit more. I noticed brass bouncing off my face going back into the chamber. Anyway. We'll start here on the buttstock end. This is the Manticore curved butt pad on. So the curved butt pad, that's great. I have the Geisley trigger pack in there. I do have a Geisley lightning bow to put on. What I'm waiting for is this entire rifle since I've used it so much. Once I have my 5.56 AR-15 really squared away, I'm gonna take this out of service for a while. It's, while. it's gonna get completely disassembled. I'm gonna do a multi-cam Cerakote on everything and bring it back up to par and put that in because it goes pretty in depth when you take it apart. I added this condition gray sling retainer catch on here. It's like it's meant to be on this thing. It fits out of the way, it doesn't get in the way of your hand, the operation at all. The sling is tidied up by it. I've showed this in other videos and I've posted a lot about it on like the Tavor group and everything, but this is gonna be a little awkward because of the way I'm standing, but keeps all the sling and stuff out of the way. You can use everything without it getting in the way. And then when you need it, you just pull this and the whole sling is ready to go. This sling that I'm using is a modified advanced gunslinger armament. It's modified because I took their rear T plate as they call it off the back. And I just webbed both of those pieces through a QD point. Now this looks kind of ugly, but it doesn't really interfere when you're using it. And I did this as sort of a proof proof concept for myself. Uh, what I plan to actually do with this is have someone with a quality sewing machine, I'll take these glide keepers out and sew this QD point in place. Sew the sling back away, just so it's out of the way. This is not super easy to take off in the back, but I have it like that on purpose. Gearhead work, this replaces the uh, plastic port cover and it has a QD slot in it too, which is nice. I, I liked it being there. This is reversible, so if you wanted the point up front, you could do that as well. <clears throat> While I'm at this point, I'll talk about, you can kind of see, may show up as like a white or something like that in the camera, and it's kind of all over the place. Probably thinking, what the hell is that? That's actually some high temperature RTV gasket maker. I put it all around, because when I started shooting suppressed with it, you got a ton of gas coming up through here. All the areas I knew gas was coming through, I removed the rail, put it in there, tightened it down while it was wet, and could be neater. I don't care too much about how things look. I just want it to work good, and it made a huge difference with gas getting into my face. Shooting this thing suppressed sucks unless you're doing something with this. Other people have just used like little rail caps over this, and that does a decent job. Shooting on humid days and stuff, I mean, my whole face and my glasses would be covered in black. So my optic, it's the Meprolite MOR. And this is actually an Israeli Defense Forces full power one. You can see it's five milliwatt. And it's got the little warning label on it about the power and stuff like that. I actually got this, I didn't even realize that. I made a trade with a friend, makes it all that better. Um, I added the Fab Defense TAR 21 Podium. Don't use it a whole lot, but it's out of the way and it doesn't add too much weight, so I put it there. And what that is, deploys a little bipod. Kind of is a little high if you're in the prone shooting, but even if you just need to put the rifle down and you don't wanna lay it on that side or need a more stable position, it helps. It's not that much money. I think I got it when I purchased it for like 50 bucks. Where the optic is mounted here, 
This was not an IDF model SAR when I got it. I'd remove this rail and I cut it because I didn't want the extra weight up front. What I had to do when I did that was get the Gearhead Works front sight because this is higher and obviously with cutting the rail out was missing out on the front sight and I wanted my backup sights. The handguard is Midwest Industries M-Lock. It's the shorter one. Didn't want to go with the longer one because I actually had this barrel cut down. It's pinned and welded so that the overall length is 26 and a quarter. It's just over the legal length. Same with the barrel. The barrel is over 16 inches too with the pin and weld. You wouldn't think it would make that much of a difference, but it really does in the overall. And uh, one thing that that helps with is these things suppressed or slightly overgassed, but they work. That kind of helps with that when I shoot it suppressed. I probably shoot it like 50-50, suppressed to unsuppressed. And the only disadvantage that I saw was if you shoot really crappy steel cased ammo like a Tula, it ejects it fine. It won't always hold open the bolt on the last shot. That could have also been because I've gotten this gun very, very dry from shooting it a lot. Also found the Midwest Industries replacement of the little Picatinny cover rail that goes here to put an M-lock because I wanted to mount a Surefire over here. I didn't quite like it adding to the overall width of the gun, so I got the Magpul offset and then mounted my scout light up here. Uh, you might look at that and think, wow, this thing's in the field of view of looking through your optic. It's really not. Um, if you were kind of offset looking through it, you might get a little teeny shadow of it. But even with that just little bit of shadow on the side, I have not found it to affect my shooting at all and outweighs having the gun be wider. Just my personal preference. And this is the 300V, so it's white light and the vampire light. And I upgraded to their switch back here that accepts the remote switch and the push button. You can push it and it's constant on. You can tap this real quick and it's constant on. So say something went wrong with your switch, which I don't think will happen now that I have this nice switch on here. I'll talk about that in a minute. You could always reach up and over real quick and hold that with your thumb or put it constant on. Though constant on, line, on especially the white light, is not a good idea. So this is a Unity tap switch. This is the version four. You might be thinking, they don't make one that plugs into the Meprolite MOR. You're right. You can see right here, what I did is I actually cut the lead off of this $175 switch and I soldered it myself to a second switch that I bought from Meprolite. So that way it will work with the MOR. Uh, I finally just did this a couple days ago because I waited for this to come in and I've been very busy with other stuff. And finally, the cheap site that I had had, or as you were, the cheap switch I had on here started kind of messing up on me that I had made as sort of like a proof concept for this. So went ahead and did it, happy with it. I think it's gonna last me forever. Uh, I put this Magpul finger stop because I noticed with this, it's very easy to wanna grab and have your hand kind of go over the front, which is getting in danger close to your blast radius if you don't have a can. And if you do have a can, danger close to burning your hand. And I think that's it as far as what I've done with this. I really love this rifle. I, I didn't know that I was gonna love it. I actually didn't really like how it looked when I first got it, but it seemed like it was, you know, it's it's proven. The IDF, I think they came out with their first concept of this in 1986, which is the year I was born. So it's been around for a long time. It's been beaten up. And with how I've used it, this gun does work. I mean, it's gotten sand all over it out at the ranch, banged against the rocks. It's bounced in my ATV, dropped on the ground off my ATV, bounced around in my truck, all kinds of like moist environments. Uh, it's been rained on. Uh, and that goes for just about all the equipment on here, uh, with the exception of the switch, but I have no doubt in my mind that that switch is gonna last. And it's had a few different spray paint jobs on it over time, and I've kind of just let that fade off, just messing around. It's a very hardy rifle. It's hard to have anything really bad to say about it. A lot of people will hate the factory trigger. I waited probably until three years ago to replace the trigger on this. I was able to shoot just the same the only reason why I changed the trigger is to bring it in the same pull rating as the rest of my rifles. Because these things factory, they're like 12 pounds, but it's not a bad 12 pounds. You, you can learn and you can shoot it very well. Everything about this thing, I love it. Uh, they have the newer X95 version of this, which is pretty cool. It's got some better options on it as compared to this. But the one thing I actually learned to love is the magazine release being back here on this. Some people 
hate it. They can't get over the learning curve. For me, what I like about this is you never need to worry about the magazine dropping free and it messing up. <clears throat> this, you're kind of reaching up when you go to reload and you're grabbing the mag anyway. And then the way I've been training is train to retain. I've talked about it in some of my other gear videos because I don't have a way of replenishing magazines. I can go buy them, but who knows? Grab it. You're already up here. Throw it in your dump pouch. Some people do this maneuver where they take their hand back and do that. I don't know. I found it kind of ends up hurting my hand a little bit. I'd say the only disadvantage to this thing, really, is it's heavy. Especially with all this stuff on it. I mean, never actually done this. Let's see how much it weighs. 11 pounds, 6.5 ounces. At least it's closer to your body. It's not hanging all the way out. I'm gonna put links in the description to some of the parts and stuff that I have on here. Just wanted to share what I did and my thoughts and stuff on the rifle. Uh, any questions or anything like that, let me know. Thank you.